I'm Angela with Happy Little Stitch Shop and today we are here to jump into our Autumn Love Sew Along week two. So this week, here's the Autumn Love Sew Along. This is what we are working on making week by week. Last week we did our pumpkin and crow block, which is right here. Isn't it cute? And this week we are jumping into the wagon block. Let me show you, I have one made. So this is the cute little block that we are making this week. Isn't it adorable? So for this week, we are working on the wagon block and this time I'm gonna try to go through fabric substitutions as always, and also a little bit more of the process of making the block. I'm not, I've gotten a little bit into it, but I'm gonna try to uh, start where I am and go through it with you. So first up, let's talk about fabric substitutions, okay? First, I'm gonna show you overhead, we will look at the oranges for the pumpkin. So for this one, and somebody had asked me, are the fabric substitutions the same throughout the entire quilt? Yes, whatever the substitution is for that fabric, it will be used throughout the whole quilt, not just for each block that I'm using. So throughout this quilt, this pretty text fabric from the original Autumn Love is going to be replaced by the um, TB fabric. This beautiful polka dot fabric is being replaced by this. And this original Autumn Love orange fabric is being replaced by this B plaids fabric. So that will do it for the oranges. Of course, we have the original Autumn Love background for all of our blocks. So this is from the original Autumn Love collection and it's still available. So we have this for all of our background for our blocks. For the um, tires for this block, this is the original and here is the substitute. For the center of the tires, this text print was the original, and here is the substitute. For the cute little star, let me show you this cute little star up here. This text fabric was the original, and here is the substitute. For the wagon, this one was the original, and here is the substitute. And of course the wagon, we have a little trim at the top of the wagon, and this little trim for the wagon handle, that's just Riley Red, so that's uh, a confetti cotton from Riley Blake Designs. This is the original and the substitute, so we'll be using the same. For the stem of the pumpkin, again, this is a confetti cotton, still available, was available back when this was originally made, so it's gonna be the same from the original. And then let's talk about these cute flowers here. We have two kind of aqua colors. This star print was the original, and here is the substitute. This teal was the original, and here is the substitute. And then let's talk about the leaves. Well, let's first talk about the center of the flowers here. This is the original, and here is the substitute for that one. Here is the original acorn, and here is the substitute for that one. And then these cute green leaves, three different green fabrics for this pumpkin print is the original. Here's the substitute. Here is the original. Here's the substitute. And here is the original and here is the substitute. 
Okay, and then for the stem, for your flowers, the two stems that need to be cut um, on the bias, not a straight cut, here's the original and here's the substitute. Okay, so those are all of the substitutions for uh, the fabrics uh, that we did with our curated kit at Happy Little Stitch Shop. So a refresher for those of you who are familiar with Autumn Love, the Autumn Love fabric collection is no longer available. It's discontinued. So we at Happy Little Stitch Shop uh, curated a redone Autumn Love uh, quilt kit, which is why we're able to do this Autumn Love so long and enjoy, and enjoy this beautiful original quilt by Lori Holt. Um, and why we're able to do this so long and enjoy it. So uh, we had redone, that's why all the, I'm sharing all the fabric substitutions with you so that you can, we can be on the same page as we make the blocks. So now the first thing that I would do is I go through and I pull out all my fabrics, do all the cutting, do all of that. If you have time to cut the full kit up front, that's obviously the best and most efficient way to do it. Um, for me, I end up pulling out the fabrics each week and, and pulling what I need for that block and then working with those fabrics. So let's look at what shapes we need and I'll show you how far I am with my block. So this is the, the block that I'm making from our Happy Little Stitch Shop Autumn Love Kit. And we need the Autumn Love So Simple Shapes. So for your pumpkin circles, you're going to need to pull out F21 and you're going to make three of those in each of the orange colors, so one in each of the orange colors. Okay, for your wagon, you'll see in Lori's uh, blog post, which I'm going to link for you, uh, in her blog post she talks about how to do the wagon. There's not a shape for this one. She gives you instructions in her blog post on how to do this. So that is for the wagon. For the flowers, for those blue flowers, you need an F6 in each of those blues. For that cute star, you need F14. For the pumpkin stem, you need F18. For those wagon wheels, you need two of the F2s. For the center of the wagon wheel, you're going to need two of the F1s, right there. For the centers of the flowers, you're going to need two F1s, one in each of those yellow colors. And then for the three green leaves, you're going to need one F5 in each of those green colors. And then, of course, I have my um, bias strips cut for the, the wagon uh, hitch and the handle, and then the top of the wagon handle, and this is for the top of your wagon. And then here are my stems, which I will be able to curve a little bit because I've cut them on the bias for my flowers. Okay, so next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to set all these aside. I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to start cutting a little, um, a little slit in each of the uh, shapes so that I can start turning them. So that's the next step. Let's take a peek. So first I need to trim them. I thought I already had this part done. Clearly I do not. So I'm just going to go around and trim, just like Lori says in all of her videos and her blog posts, about a quarter inch seam. Once I trim that, I'm, for me, this is how I do it. I'm going to pull the interfacing away from my fabric so I don't snip it. And I'm going to just cut a little cross in the back of this. And then I'm going to turn it. Kind of run my fingers along the seam a little bit. Then I'm going to grab, first of all, I have to show you guys. Oh, look what has arrived. I love these mugs. Oh my gosh, this is the brand new uh, tin mug from. Lori Holt's new collection called Hometown, and the whole collection has arrived at the shop. Oh my gosh, you guys, we got three pallets full, and it was a lot of sweat and <laughs> work to carry all those boxes down 
uh, to the shop. But that cute little mug is a reward for all of that. Okay, so once I flip this shape, I'm just going to gently, and for those of you who follow me know that sometimes I have just poked a hole right through. Apparently I forget to be gentle in my haste, but you want to be gentle and just kind of shape the outside of it, you know, and then I'm going to go and press this. So um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take time to go through and trim and, and uh, flip all of my shapes and press them so that we can start putting together the pumpkin wagon block. So uh, I will be back with you in just a little bit. I'm going to go take care of my shapes and I'll be back so that we can put our block together. Hello guys. So I went ahead and I trimmed all of my shapes and I turned them and I pressed them. Um, one thing to note, as I was trimming, I realized that I told you one of the wrong oranges at the beginning. So let's take a peek at um, the correct orange. In this pumpkin, uh, this orange is different from the first pumpkin. This is the brighter orange in the original kit with the text on it. So this is the substitute for that. Okay. So there is the brighter orange for this pumpkin. The other thing I wanted to show you, I saved one of these little leaves to turn because I've had a lot of questions from you guys about how to get into this thinner part down here. So I'm going to show you what I do. I don't know if this will be helpful for you or not, but this is how I do it and I seem to have an okay bit of luck with it. So I'll show you. I start by turning the, th the thicker part. So I don't turn the thin part first. I start at the top and turn the, the wider part first. Try to get that flipped out as best I can. And then I try to do as good of a job as I can with that thinner part. And as long as I can just get it like that, even just like that, which look at that, that looks horrible. But even just like that, then I can use my point to point turner to easily and gently work that point out. Don't be too hard with it because you don't want to poke a hole in your fabric. Sometimes if I can get the interfacing and the fabric to push together, then I can push a little bit more. See, look, that tip is pretty good. And then after I have that tip out, then I go around and I gently turn the rest of it to shape it as best I can. Oops, see, look at that, I just poked a hole in there. But I am not going to fret about it because Lori has a little trick. You take a little bit of glue on your finger and you just curl that back. So when I applique <laughs> it, I'm going to do a stitch around the outside and this isn't going to matter at all. So I'm not, I don't get, I used to get very, very excited about, um, uh, when I would poke a hole in the fabric, I used to be like, oh no, I poked a hole again. What am I going to do? But now if it's just a little hole like this one is, I don't worry about it. I use a little bit of glue to hold it in place after I press it. And, um, uh, when I go around and applique around the outside of that, um, it's not going to fray. Nothing's going to happen to it. It's going to be just fine. So I'm going to press this little, little bugger, and then I'm going to come back and we're going to start to lay out our wagon block. So I'll be right back with you in just a minute. Okay guys, a couple more things before we get into putting everything down in our block and glue basting. There are a couple pieces that we can glue baste ahead of time. So that's what I like to do. That way they're done. So let's take a peek. I have the two wagon wheels here that I'm going to glue baste the center circles on right there. And I also have these two flowers that I am going to glue baste. Um, oops, they go under the top part on. So I'm going to glue baste that and I'm going to glue baste that one. So for those two and these two, then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my red trim that's going to go at the top of my wagon 
and I'm going to press under the corners just like uh, Lori says in her blog post. I'm going to press those under and I'm going to put that on top here and get that glue basted down. Um, and what else? I think those are all the pieces that I'm going to glue, glue, glue base ahead of time. So I will, uh, I'm going to do that quick and I'll be right back with those pieces together so then we can go ahead and put our pieces on the on the background. Be right back. Alright everybody, are you ready to lay out this adorable wagon block? It is so darn cute. I've gotten a little bit of a start because I wanted to do, to do some measurements, so let's take a peek at what's going on here. Um, I went ahead and started to lay out my wagon. I compared it to this one so that I could have some measurements to do. And I measured, it looks like I put these at about one and five eighths up from the top. I went ahead and just did this one at one and three fourths from the bottom. So both of those wheels measure one, well that one doesn't, that one measures one and three fourths. This one needs to move up just a tish. There. So now both of them are about one and three fourths from the bottom. Okay, so that gives us a start. Next, I am going to put the pumpkins in the middle. And so I'm going to have this one here, this one on top, and this one on the side. Now, so I don't have a lot, so I can tuck these under and make this kind of a short, fat pumpkin. I'm going to trim a tish off the bottom. Oh my gosh, when I did my first block, this part was so scary. I was like, no, I don't want to cut the bottom off. But that's what I'm going to do. And again, this one's going to go on the outside. This one's going to go on the outside. We're going to overlap a tish in the middle. That's why I didn't pin the top of my wagon down so I could slide these underneath. I want this one to go down a little bit more. And make sure it doesn't get stuck on the interfacing underneath. And then this one is going to go in the middle. Now, I'm going to want to Pull that together a little bit. Just keep messing around with it until I get it to look about how I want it to look. makes a difference when you have the stem on the top. So that is pretty cute. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, put a few pins in it. Just to hold everything in place. Okay, now I'm going to take my little wagon tongue and I'm going to put it in there. I pressed the outside of it under. So I'm going to put that there. And I'm going to take this. This is gonna has a string on it. This is gonna lean just a tish onto the wagon side there. Little 
red handle is going to go on the top. Do you see it coming together just a little bit? All right, so there's that. This star is just kind of hanging out up here. And again, I'm going to have to pull out my 10 and a half inch ruler and make sure all this looks good. Um, in here before I get too carried away. Now I have my two small, or one long, one small uh, stems, which I'm going to press a little bit of a curve into this one going this way, because this is going to come up to about here and it's going to curve down here. So I'm going to quick press, press it in there into that. And then this is going to go up here, except this is going to go on top. Okay, so I'll be right back. I'm going to press these quick and then we'll come back and do the flowers. Okay, so I went ahead and I pressed a curve into my stems. I started to do this one here. I um, have to be careful about not getting, letting it get too close to the edge. So, again, some of this might need to be moved as I... Um, put my ruler on it to see to see how it's how it looks and if it all fits into the window that it's supposed to fit into Let's see how this just have our three leaves to add in. One is going to go about okay. This one is going to overlap the wagon a tish. And then this one is a little bit lower. Okay, I'm back with my ten and a half inch trimmer ruler. Now, as I lay this on here with my pins, I see that I am going to be too too wide side to side. It is really hard to do this from not close up because I'm used to like leaning way over. And if I lean way over, as you can tell, you get my gray hairs in the in the frame and really who who wants to tune in for that so I'm gonna have to move these in a little bit I'm gonna have to readjust because I think I'm fine up and down um, you know top to bottom I have enough room up here to to not cut anything off and I have enough room down here so I have enough room to work with top to bottom but side to side I'm at about a you know a quarter of an inch inside the seam allowance here and I'm not quite there over here so what I think I'm gonna do is maybe shorten my tongue a little bit and maybe move in my flower a tish to see if that makes a difference. I don't want to have to do too many crazy adjustments because I don't want to have to lay out my whole block again. But um, some minor adjustments are called for here. So that is a small adjustment there. And then over here, I'm just going to move this in a tish. 
move that over a tish, maybe angle it up just a little bit to save a little bit of extra room and let's see how this guy fits in here. So hold on, I gotta, I can't see. I'm looking at about a half inch up top, about three fourths of an inch at the bottom. Oh yeah, that was a big help. And about a half inch on either side, it looks like, with those leaves. Okay, so I'm probably, once I can see a little bit better, I'm gonna take a, take a break here and I'm gonna fiddle around with this a little bit more, make sure my flower, that flower up here might need to scooch just a tish. So I'm gonna mess around with this a little bit and then um, come back and we will do some quick glue basting with our soup glue and then the block will be set. So I'll be right back with you in just a minute so I can take a peek at this and see how everything looks without without you guys seeing the top of my head. Okay guys, I did a little bit of tweaking and here we are. I think it's pretty good. I think it's gonna, it's all gonna work and it's all gonna fit where it needs to fit. So now I'm going to take my Sioux glue and I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna dot by dot um, uh, glue based all of these pieces down. Okay, so and so I, I, I'm gonna have to lean over again and uh, do this. So <laughs> if you guys see the top of my head. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna glue base just a little dot on each piece and uh, get that basted down and then I will be back with you after that dries. So I'll be back with you in just a minute. Okay, you guys, are you ready? Did you lay out your wagon block and how did it go? I am done with mine. Let's take a peek overhead. I have it under my um, under my ruler right now. I like to put a ruler on top of it until it kind of dries. It's a little bit early. I think it still needs to dry a little bit more. But that's our wagon block. And then of course once I applique it, I will um, trim it down using the ten and a half inch trim it ruler. I'll trim it down to the right size but it's very, very cute. So here we have both blocks, the original from the original Autumn Love Kit and the Happy Little Stitch Shop Autumn Love Kit. I think it looks gorgeous. I cannot wait to see this quilt come together, you guys. Look at those blocks. They're so, so cute. Okay, so that is a wrap for the wagon block for week two of Autumn Love. I hope you guys are having fun. I hope that you are enjoying these little blocks as much as I am. I love fall. I love this quilt. I love putting together these blocks. It is so, so much fun. And I just keep thinking by the time we get done with this, it'll be about October and I will have a brand new fall quilt to enjoy for the autumn season. So I'm so, so excited. So. I will be back with you again next week for week three of our Autumn Love uh, So Long. Uh, next week we will be working on the pumpkin, or no, the bucket block. So this cute little bucket block right there. That's what we'll be working on next week. That'll be so, so cute. Please remember to check out my blog at happylittlestitchshop.com because I will link all of Lori's original blog posts because she gives you need it in order to be able to make these cute blocks. You need to be able to read all the special things that she's doing in there, um, such as the wagon. She had some keynotes about the wagon and how to put that together. And then also, FYI, some keynotes in her blog about these flowers because you have to 
um, modify that shape in order to get those flowers. So be sure to check out our happy little blog at happylittlestitchup.com. Each week I'm posting out there with pictures of my finishes as well as links to everything that you need um, in order to be able to make these cute blocks. So be sure to check that out. And then I will be back with you next week on Monday, both on the blog and on our YouTube to work on block three. And for that one, you know, I was already in the middle of this one. I'd already done some work on it before hearing some feedback from people about wanting to see more of the process. So for week three, we'll start, we'll just be in here sewing together. So that's kind of my plan for week three. So I hope you'll tune in for that. Otherwise, please be sure to follow Happy Little Stitch Up on Instagram and Facebook. And please be sure to subscribe to our Happy Little Stitch Up YouTube channel. And most importantly, we have so much stuff in the shop. Our shop is overflowing with gorgeous fabrics and notions and cross stitch and crochet. So please be sure you go to happylittlestitchup.com and check out all the things that we have there. And, um, I am very, very excited because, like I said, hometown just arrived. We got many, many pallets of hometown unpackaged and in the shop and ready to get out the door to you guys. Uh, so happiness and goodness is coming from Happy Little Stitch Shop. So be sure to check out happylittlestitchshop.com. I will see you guys again next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Take care, everybody. Happy stitching.